Hi friends. In this session, we are going to solve one numerical on Holzer method. So, see the statement. Using the Holzer method, find the natural frequency of the given system. And for that, they have given I1, I2, I3 is equal to 1, and stiffness of the shaft is 1. That is, KT1 and K2 to KT2 is 1. Means they have simplified the given numerical to determine the answers. Actually, this Holzer method is <coughs> approximation method where we have derived one formula in last session and that formula is summation m omega square x will be equal to 0. So, we have derived for the linear system but they have provided us one torsional system. So, according to that I am going to modify our equation. So, summation instead of mass I will write here mass moment of inertia then angular velocity square and in t uh, instead of displacement I will write here theta or phi that is the amplitude and that will be equal to 0. Means this mass will be replaced by mass moment of inertia omega is omega and the linear displacement that is amplitude x will be represented by phi. So I have transferred the given formula of Holzer method into the formula uh, which is required for uh, this uh, numerical. Now, to solve this numerical, see what we have to do, we have to consider the value of omega and depending upon that we are going to determine the summation of i omega square phi is equal to 0. Whenever we are going to achieve this summation is equal to 0 means that frequency will be our natural frequency. Okay, Means we will have to determine this i omega square phi. Okay, So for that we want to write this one in this table. So I have taken one table and in this table whatever the values I am going to write according to that I have taken the number of rows and columns. Okay, So I will uh, show you how to draw, how to write and how to determine the natural frequency. So first here I will write the trial because we are going to consider the value of omega depending upon that I will show the val value of omega which is assumed here. Then we require i omega square phi. So here I will write the first term i then omega square then phi. Okay, So i omega square phi and next I will require the multiplication of i omega square phi. So this is the multiplication of i omega square phi. Then the next term we require the summation. So here I will write the summation of i omega square phi means up to this point we will determine i omega square phi for each disk and then we will make the summation of all the disk here. Okay. Then after that we will have to determine this value of phi that we are going to consider. For that we will require the stiffness and along with stiffness we will require one more term that is summation i omega square phi divided by k. See these two terms, I will uh, mark these two terms by red pen, see, I will mark these two terms by red pen, these two terms are required to determine the value of phi, okay, means actually in our problem we will have to determine only summation, but to calculate this phi we will require this stiffness and summation i omega square phi divided by k. So these two terms are supporting to determine the value of phi. Okay. Now we will consider the first trial. See if you see the three disc and on the right side and on the left side there is no shaft. Means this system is a semi definite system. Means this system is semi definite system. In semi definite system one frequency is always zero. One frequency is always zero. So, if I plot the graph of summation i omega square phi, I will show you how to plot this graph. Then, we will have to start with the zero because when I put this zero, then all the values will become zero. Okay. Now, so definitely one frequency will be zero because there is no shaft on right side and on the left side. Okay. Now, 
will start with the trial initially we'll consider the value of omega consider omega is equal to 0.25 so how i have taken this omega is equal to 0.25 because one value is zero so i will have to start from the zero so the next value i have taken for the calculation is 0.25 now write the first i i means i1 i2 and i3 how many i we have here three three disc means three i values means i1 i2 i3 and all the values are one means for first condition it is one for second it is one and for third it is one so i1 i2 i3 means i am going to write the three rows in this single row okay now second i omega square now take the square of this 0.25 25 which is we considered this value okay so the square of 0.25 is 0.0625 so i'll write for each value so 0.06 Zero point zero six two five. Here, zero point zero six two five. So omega is same for all the discs. One, two, three. So I have written omega square value. Now here we we'll have to make the assumptions. That is, the amplitude of vibration we have to consider for initial case, initial case as one. So I'll consider as one. Okay. So phi is one. Now make the calculation i. Omega square phi, so this comes out to be zero point zero six two five. Okay, now what is the summation? We have only one value. The summation will be same, zero point zero six two five. Now the value of k, you have to check the first k. So here is here we'll see the k t one, and this k t one value is one. So I'll write here one. So this summation divided by one, so 0.0625 divided by one will be 0.0625. Okay. Now, the most important thing I am going to mark that thing with different pen. I will take the green pen. So how to determine this value? That is more important, and I will show here how I am going to determine that value. Okay. So how to determine? Take the initial value of phi, and that is one. So one minus. Now take this ratio. Summation i omega square phi divided by k. This ratio. So one minus zero point zero six two five. This will provide you the next phi value. So one minus zero point zero six two five. It comes out to be zero point nine three. So here I have taken a small approximate value. Okay, so zero point ninety three. So this is the most important thing. Here we have considered the value of phi is one, and the next phi will be one minus this last value. Okay, so zero point zero six two five. Now we have the second row. Now solve for the second row. So for second row, I'll use the get black pen. So i second term is omega square phi. Multiply this second row. I omega square phi. This multiplication will be. 0.058. This is 0.058. Now we we'll have to make the summation. So this first i omega square phi and second i omega square phi you will have to add. So the addition is 0.12. Then the stiffness value for second case k t two is also one. So it is one. Now summation divided by one will be 0.12. Now. We'll write the third value again. How to write the third value? How to write the third value? Just see. I'm going to use different pen, so I'm going to determine this value now. Now to determine this value, I'll write here. See, just take the value which is just above to this one. That is the 0.93 minus. So 0.93 minus. For second row, what is the value of summation divided by k? It is 0.12. So 0.93 minus 0.12. So this will be 0.81. 0.81. 
now make the multiplication now what is the multiplication of i omega square phi multiply these three terms in the third row and it comes out to be 0 0.05 now the summation will be first second and third of i omega square phi 1 2 3 here make the summation of these three terms and it is 0 0.17 now i'll make the box here if this value comes out zero means the omega that you have considered is your natural frequency again i will repeat when this after completing for three masses when this summation will become zero means the whatever omega you have considered is your natural frequency now for this case this value is 0 0.17 means there is no zero so this is not the natural frequency okay so this is not the natural frequency of the system there is no, no need to calculate this one because we don't have the third spring and there will be no next term of phi so this will be dash okay so with the first trial we have considered the value of omega and we have calculated the summation see here we require the summation is equal to zero for the holzer method now we'll make the second trial now in the uh, same uh, terms we have to go so we have started with zero then 0 0.25 now i'll consider omega is equal to 0 0.5 okay so the three masses that is uh, mass moment of inertia are 1 1 1 now summation of 0.5 summation of 0.5 is 0 0.25 which will be common for all because all the disks are rotating with space speed so 0 0.25 common now here we have to consider the first phi value the first phi value will be 1 now make the multiplication i omega square phi now what is the value of i omega square phi for this case the multiplication will be 0 0.25 then the summation for second this is the first term so the summation is 0 0.25 now the first value of k here see first and second value of k is same that is 1 so i will directly write here now summation divided by k so 0 0.25 divided by k means 1 so it will be 0 0.25 now we have to tell me what will be the next value of phi what will be the next value of phi yes again i am going to use this pen how to calculate this one one more time i will show how to calculate take the first value that is 1 minus the calculated summation divided by k 0 0.25 so 1 minus 0 0.25 will be 0 0.75 okay so the next value of phi will be 0 0.75 now make the multiplication m sorry i omega square phi now the multiplication of this term it is 0 0.19 now next is the summation so take the summation of these two terms 0 0.25 plus 0 0.19 the summation of these two terms it is 0 0.44 now the next is k second k is 1 now last term is summation divided by k so 0 0.44 divided by 1 is 0 0.44 now one more time i will show the value of phi how to calculate this phi the third term again to calculate this one what we have to consider consider the above value to this one that is 0 0.75 so 0 0.75 minus 0 0.75 minus this last term summation i omega square phi divided by k which is 0 0.44 and this the subtraction the subtraction is this check it is 0 0.31 now multiplication of these three i omega square phi it is 0 0.07 so i'll change the pin 0 0.07 okay now the summation of these three summation of these three is 0 
now this check this value if it is zero then the omega value will be your natural frequency just check so this value is not zero means this is not the natural frequency now we will have to consider the next value okay so we have started with zero then 0 0.25, 0 0.5. So the next value I'm that going to consider will be 0 0.75. So omega will be 0 0.75. We have three i values, one, one, one. Now omega square. So 0 0.75 square. It is 0 0.56. 0 0.56 for all. Now consider the first phi value. It is one. So multiplication of these three terms, i omega square phi. So it is 0 0.56 so the summation will be again 0 0.56 the first value of k from the shaft is 1 so summation divided by 1 will be 0 0.56 now just tell me the second value I'll make the circle now how to calculate this one 1 minus this last term 0 0.56 so 1 minus 0 0.56 will be 0 0.44 0.44 Okay. Now, for second row, i omega square phi, we know, multiply these three terms, i omega square phi, its multiplication will be 0 0.24. Now, summation of these two terms, 0 0.56 plus 0 0.24, it is summation is 0 0.8. Again, the next value of uh, k is 1, so 0 0.8 divided by 1 will be 0 0.8. Now, the next value, how to calculate? How to calculate? 0 0.44 minus 0 0.8. So this will be minus 0 0.36. Now multiply i omega square phi. This multiplication will be minus 0 0.2. Now add 1, 2 and 3. Add 3 terms. You will get the answer 0 0.6. There is no need to calculate this next term. We got the summation of 3 and it is 0 0.6. Means again we have not reached to zero we have not reached to zero means we have not got the natural frequency so we'll go for the next trial so omega will be equal to one see i have started from 0 0.25 0 0.5 0 0.75 next is one so one 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 now one square is one 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 okay now the first value of phi is one so multiplication of m omega square phi 1 1 1 in, is 1 then summation will be 1 the first value of k is 1 so 1 divided by 1 will be 1 now this value is important how to calculate this one this 1 minus this last term 1 1 minus 1 will be 0 now multiply the second row 1 into 1 into 0 so it is 0 Okay. Now, summation of these two terms, 1 plus 0 is 1. The second value of k is 1. So, 1 divided by 1 is 1. Now, how to calculate this next phi? It will be 0 minus 1. So, it will become minus 1. Okay. 0 minus 1 will be minus 1. Now, we have i omega square phi. So, multiply by these third three terms. So, 1 into 1 into minus 1 will be minus 1. Now summation of these three, 1 plus 0 plus minus 1 means it will become 0 and just see we got summation i omega square will, uh, we got the value of summation i omega square is 0 means this is the natural frequency that we have got. Now I am going to draw one graph here. This is for uh, your uh, uh, understanding purpose and if you draw this graph you will definitely get the values of omega now what we have to draw yes i will show okay so first consider x and y axis on y axis summation i omega square phi and on x axis plot the value of omega okay now we have four trials so i will have to plot for four times so i'm going to plot just check now the first value that we have taken as this is the semi-definite system 
so the first value we have taken is 0 then 0 0.25 then 0.5 then 0 0.75 then 1 so till 1 we have plotted so I have marked the values of omega n that we have taken as trial now I will plot the summation i omega square phi now how to plot the summation i omega square phi for that I will change the pin just see the first value is 0 0.17 so for 0 0.75 the value of phi is the value of phi is 0 0.17 so the graph will start from here and it will reach to this value it is started from 0 it will reach to 0 0.17 then for 0 0.5 this value is 0 0.51 so here it will be for 0 0.5 0 0.51 means this graph is moved in upward direction for next 0 0.75 the value is 0 0.6 so for 0 0.75 again I will plot the value 0 0.6 means the graph is moved in upward direction ok so the curve is moving upward but for 1 for 1 it is reached to 0 means the value of i omega square phi will be 0 on this axis means it is declined and come to this point so when this curve is going to intersect with this horizontal you will get the answer so this is your omega n and that omega n value is 1 so omega n is 1 and here also you just see it is started from 0 so here also we have omega n is equal to 0 so the first frequency is 0 and the second frequency is 1 now see we have three rotors so for this system we have three frequencies now we got omega n is equal to 0 omega n is equal to 1 means we have two frequencies we will have to find one more frequency so for that we will make the calculation and simultaneously I will draw this graph ok so again move to the next trial move to the next trial now the important thing whatever I am going to see is according to this table I have plotted this graph if you plot this graph then it is very much easy to determine the natural frequency whenever this curve is going to cut the cut to the horizontal line you will get the natural frequency ok now take omega is equal to 1.25 so we are adding 0 0.25 each time just see now the value of i 1 1 1 the value of omega square here so 1.25 square so 1.25 square is 1.56 so I will write 1.56 for each term now here for consider the first value of phi consider the first value of phi as first value of phi as 1 now multiplication of this i omega square phi it will be 1.56 so summation will be 1.56 the first value of k we know from shaft it is 1 so 1.56 divided by 1 is 1.56 ok now determine the second value of phi how to determine 1 minus this last term so 1 minus 1.56 will be minus 0 0.56 now multiply i omega square phi for the second row and it is minus 0 point sorry minus 0 0.87 it is minus 0 0.87 the multiplication is minus 0 0.87 now summation of first term and second term the summation of first term and second term is 0 0.69 means 1.56 plus minus 0 0.87 so 0 0.69 the second value of k is 1 so this term will be 0 0.69 ok now here we will have to calculate the term, third term see again I am going to show you here because the term is negative so how to calculate this one ok so to calculate this one see I am going to show here the above term is minus 0 0.56 then we will have to subtract the second term ok and this second term is 0 0.69 so minus 0 0.56 minus 0 0.69 ok 
okay so this subtraction will be let's calculate and this subtraction will be 1 point sorry 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 it is minus 1.95 the subtraction is sorry it is minus 1.25 minus 1.25 okay so multiplication of these three terms so multiplication will be minus 1.95 now addition of these three terms addition of these three terms is minus 1.26 so just check this summation if it is zero then we will get the natural frequency as this term is not zero so we have not got the natural frequency but we will plot the next value see for 1.25 so here i'll mark omega n is equal to 1.25 and we have got the value of summation summation i omega square phi and just check the value here it is minus 1.26 so i'll plot minus 1.26 so this curve is moved in downward direction this curve is moved in downward direction means we have not got the natural frequency so we will have to make the next calculation ok so now when we will get now when we will get uh, the natural frequency when this graph will move in upward direction then it will cut to omega n means we will have to wait to get this value again a positive when this will value will become positive we will get the natural frequency ok so we will calculate for next omega so consider omega will be 1.5 the values of i is 111 so 1.5 square is 2.25 so it will be common for all the three disks so 2.25 so consider the first value of phi as 1 so the multiplication will be 2.25 1 into 2.25 into 1 that is 2.25 then the summation will be 2.25 the first value of k is 1 summation divided by 1 will be 2.25 so we got the first row for the next uh, trial this trial now you have to tell me this value how to calculate this 1 minus this last term so 1 minus 2.25 will be minus 1.25 now multiplication of i omega square phi means 1 into 2.25 into minus 1.25 ok so what will be the multiplication it is minus 2.82 now addition of these two 2.25 minus 2.82 its addition is minus 0 0.56 now the next value of k is 1 so summation divided by 1 will be minus 0 0.57 ok now we will have to determine the next value now to determine the next value again I am going to show the calculation see for this term I am sure why I am going to show the calculation so just see here I will show the calculation see the above term above term is minus 1.25 minus what will be the value of minus this term so minus minus 0 0.56 so calculate this term calculate this one we will get this answer ok so this minus minus will become plus so minus 1.25 plus 0 0.57 and the answer will be minus 0 0.68 minus 0 0.68 now multiplication i omega square phi multiply these three terms multiply and give me the answer the answer is minus 1.52 now addition of these three terms means 2.25 minus 2.82 minus 1.53 just solve this means add these terms we will get the answer minus 2.1 see this one summation that we have got is not zero means we have not reached to the answer again I will plot so to plot this see we have considered the next value of omega n and that is 1.5 and the value that we have got is 2.1 minus so here it is minus 2.1 means this graph is moved in downward direction ok 
So this graph is moved in downward direction. Means we have not reached to the answer. When this graph will move in positive, then it will come cut this omega m. So for that, we'll consider the next trial. Okay. So the next trial uh, in the same sequence, I'm going to add. So omega will be 1.75. So 1 1 1 omega square 1.75 square. It is 3.06. Now, first value of phi that we have to consider 1. So, i omega square phi will be 3.06. Summation will be again 3.06 because this is the first value. The value of k is 1. So, summation divided by k will be 3.06. Now, this term. Now, tell me this term. It is 1 minus last term. So, this will become minus 2.06. Now multiplication of i omega square phi, this multiplication will be minus 6.3. Now addition of these two terms, it is minus 3.24. The value of k is 1. Now 3.24 divided by 1 will be minus 3.2. Now how to determine this next value of phi? Minus 2.06 minus this total term. So this minus minus will become plus and you will get the answer as 1.77. So the multiplication i omega phi of phi will be 5.77. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, this answer is not uh, uh, sorry, I made one mistake here. Yes, it is minus 3.24. So minus 2.06 plus 3.24, this comes out to be 1.18. Sorry, I have made one mistake here. It is 1.18. And the multiplication of these three terms is 3.6. So I will write here 3.6. Now summation of all. So summation of all is 0.36. Now we got the answer. Why we got the answer? Because initially we are moving in negative values of summation. Now we move to the positive value. Now we move to positive value means for 1.75 we have the positive value of summation. And I will plot that one. So it is 0 0.36. So I will mark here 0.36 means this graph moved in upward direction to 0.36 means there is omega n where, where this curve cut this x axis we got the omega n. Now just see the value where it is cut it is less than 1.75 so as this is the approximate method and it is very much close to 1.75 so i'll write this value as 1.7 i'll write this value as 1.7 or you can make next trial by considering omega is equal to 1.7 and you will get finally this answer which is close to zero which is close to zero you get the perfect answer but if you plot this graph if you plot this graph there is no need to calculate again for 1.7 okay means we got the three answers so i'll write the natural frequency so answers the first one omega n1 will be equal to 0 the second one omega n2 will be equal to 1 actually it is radian per second and the third answer is omega n3 which is 1.7 radian per second. Now number of students will ask why we have stopped here, we have, why we have not moved till the summation is 0 because this method is approximate method means we will have to reach to such value that it will be very much near to the natural frequency. Okay. 
So I have directly shown on the graph. So along with this table, if you plot simultaneously the graph, you will get the natural frequency. Okay.